Now let the Lord be praised with a shout of jubilation. Let a shout of jubilation go up. Where's the loud section at? Where's the people that know what they come out of? Hey, 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 Jesus. You would not have to tell me or give me a long Bible study or lesson to know it. I could walk in this atmosphere and know right away I'm in a one God. Jesus' name baptized. Holy Ghost feel. Owl running, shingle shaking, window rattling, devil chasing, Pentecostal. There's electricity in this atmosphere tonight. Whoo! Some of you are already healed. You don't know it yet. There's a healing river here. My God. If you knew how many blessings were hanging up in the portals of heaven for you with your name on it right now. In the next 25, 30 minutes, you would not worry about who rolled their eyes at you who wondered if you've lost your mind or not, you would participate and let the spirit of David get on you. That somebody said, what a fool you are for Christ. Now these last several weekends I'm the one that I, somebody told me something this morning I said am I getting a bill for all this are y'all gonna charge me for staying here and preaching here because this has been a treat for me this is some of my old stomping grounds for me and my family and uh, I mean what I'm about to say me and brother John Voskis your pastor uh, we're, we're this kind of friends. We go long times and we don't see each other. He's doing his thing with you guys. I'm busy wherever, but whenever we get together, we just reconnect, and pick up right where we left off. That's how good friends do. And you know, you got some of them friends, if you don't see them for six months, you don't know if they still going to be a friend when you see them again because they got multiple personalities. And I'm glad that your pastor and your pastor's wife, that these people are friends to your face and behind your back. You ought to give them an honor of a hand praise. I know whenever I have liberty, and I appreciate him giving me liberty, he has assured me of that. Some preachers say, take your liberty because you're going to have to take it from them. But, but we have liberty. Listen to me. We're going out of here with a bang tonight. We're going out of here with a bang tonight. I believe, now I'm talking about God-inspired stuff. I'm not talking about foolishness, but I believe if you leaped and danced and praised and twirled in circles, you wouldn't get set down. I believe if you shouted hallelujah, he wouldn't send a deacon over there and say, shut that up. I don't believe if you started screaming Jesus and speaking in tongues, I don't think he'd say, uh, carry him to the back. I don't believe that would happen. The modern day Pentecostal church, if they're not careful, they're gonna get so politically correct till it ain't the government gonna shut us down. We're gonna shut our own self down because we're afraid to be who we are. I will talk about it. Y'all gotta lean left to right. I know what I'm doing. You're getting ready to, 
I was managing a radio station back in the 90s, and I was going to put these people on air as a Christian radio station. I went to meet with this Methodist pastor, humongous, thousand, over 1,000 member Methodist church, and the lady, the secretary, gave me a tour of the church because the pastor wasn't there. So she led me in, and she was bringing me in. She, I said, I love this place. It's beautiful. And she said, oh, you would love our pastor. She said, but he's a little unconventional. I said, really, how is that? She said, well, go stand up there in his pulpit and tell me what you see. When I walked up in the pulpit, I looked, and in the floor was a Bible encased in acrylic see-through glass. And she said, do you see it? I said, yeah. She said, he likes to stand on the Word when he's preaching. I said, I like him already. I like this Methodist. And I said, she said, you can come. I said, hold on, let me see what scripture this is. It was John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. I felt so at home. I just reached up over that Methodist pulpit and said, I want to quote a scripture. Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. She led me off to the side, and she said, now you see these rooms here. I said, what is that? She said, well, she said, our pastor, he's different. And she said, some people here are different. I said, how do you mean? She said, well, she said, sometimes when pastor is preaching, she said, I don't know how to explain it. She said, but people get overcome. And she said, they'll start. She said, they're not cold, but they shake. And she said, they tremor. And she said, they'll cry. And she said, so as not to uh, upset all the other people that don't understand this, she said, we put in cry rooms so they can go in these rooms. And she said, they say things and they do things and they do it in there. I said, well, I, I, can, I can appreciate at least you're making a room for it. The problem is, modern-day Pentecostals, we can't keep it in a cry room. This is the room. If you're ashamed of this, I'm ashamed of you. Let me read to you out of the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 13, Joshua chapter number 6. 2 Chronicles chapter number 13 and Joshua chapter number 6. And it says in Chronicles 13, 15, Then the men of Judah gave a shout. And as the men of... My God, I just got a revelation. Somebody said, these women are talking too much. Well, if we shut all these women down, it's liable to become a quiet church. Hey, men, we don't need to let these women outshout us. The men of Judah shouted and it came to pass. Ain't that an interesting phrase? When they shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all of Israel before Abijah and Judah. Joshua chapter number 6 and 13 should be familiar to, to you, at least the, the story. And the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew the trumpets, and the armed men went before them. But the rearward came after the ark of the Lord, and the priests going on, blowing with trumpets. And the second day they come past the city once, and return into the camp. So they did six days, and it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning tell your neighbor something's about to dawn on you about the dawning of the day mm. and they come past the city after the manor seven times only on that day they come past the city seven times and it came to pass that at the seventh time this is what I want when the priest blew with trumpets 
Joshua said unto the people, Shout. For the Lord has given you the city. Now I'm going to tell you some prophetic things right now. Shouters possess cities. Tell your neighbor, say, you might be too dignified for me. I'm about to possess something. Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Mm. Jesus, thank you, God, for these sweet people. Thank you for your glory that's about to drop in this place. Let your anointing drip off of me and every individual in this place. Let your anointing be prophetic. Let it speak to the hearts and the minds of people. Let us know your will. Let us operate under the operation of spiritual warfare to push back demonic strongholds off of homes and families tonight. Let us possess new territory around Potts Camp, Marshall County. In the name of Jesus, I pray it, declare it. Somebody shout. Tell your neighbor, say, I will be shouting tonight. Say, I will be shouting. He's preaching, but I'm the shouter, so I will be shouting. So if you need to move or get by somebody who's more lame and less enthused, you can be seated. Watch this. Judah and King Abijah were surrounded. They're surrounded, but whenever they lifted up their voices and began to shout, God smote Jeroboam and the armies and defeated the enemy. They literally shouted their way out. Tell your neighbor, you can shout your way out. Get it now. They're surrounded, but they don't have to fight. They don't have to draw a sword. They don't have to cuss nobody out. They just start shouting to the Lord. And as they shout, the Lord turned the enemy against each other. You need to learn something that whenever people rise up against you, if it's actually a demonic attack, if you'll hold your peace and keep your sanity and stay in a place and a pocket of praise, devils will eventually do what they do. They'll turn on each other. And it'll confuse the adversary when you learn how to shout when you should pout. Tell your neighbor, say, quit pouting and start shouting. They literally shouted their way out of this situation. But then another thing happens. We read about it with Joshua and Israel. And whenever Joshua and Israel were locked outside of Jericho, the city that the Lord had given them, they lifted up their voices because evidently they learned something. This thing works. When they lifted up their voices and began to shout, the walls of Jericho fell down flat and they literally shouted their way in. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. Some of you are needing to get out of something. But I'm showing you prophetically from the Bible, you can shout your way out of anything that's trying to hold you in. But you also can shout your way in of anything that's trying to hold you out. I don't know if you're trying to get in to something or you're trying to get out of something. But what we're about to do here in about 15 minutes, we're going to either go in or come out, but one way or another, there's going to come something out of you that's going to bring something out of heaven. I feel a miracle in the making. 
Now listen to me, because, because for six days, Joshua has instructed these people, we're going to get up and we're going to march one time around this walled city of Jericho, only one time, and there won't be anybody saying anything. All we will do is have the priests going around and they will be blowing trumpets. It'll, be, it'll sound like a parade. The only thing is, he says, nobody spake a word. Everybody be quiet. Everybody just go around this thing And we're going to go around it only one time First day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day One of the greatest miracles of this whole thing Is how you kept all these Pentecostals quiet That's a bigger miracle than walls falling down How you can be quiet when the Ark of the Covenant is It's hard to be quiet when God shows up and he said, I just, I'm trying to show you something. And so he says, we're going to let the priests do their part. But he said, I'm going to show you how if all you got is a loud preacher and you don't have nobody saying nothing, even though you're moving, going in the right direction, I'm going to show you how nothing changes until the people put their voice with the man of God's voice. No miracle happened until they opened up their mouths. Why? Because, let me explain this to you, shouting is not dancing. Somebody said, whoa, look, he's shouting. No, he may be shouting, but this is not shouting. Shouting is not in your feet. Shouting is not in your hands. Shouting is in your mouth. Mm. What he was showing them was Is that you must learn How to operate In harmony with what the ark is doing And what the priests are doing Because he said You got to know that life and death Is in the power of your tongue And sometimes it's best not to say anything Rather than mess up and say the wrong thing and so he explains to them, he says, I want you to go around here six days, one time each day, and then we'll do this on the seventh day six more times. And, and then on the seventh time, I'm going to let you make some racket, and I'm going to show you that you can have the best singing, you can have the best preaching, you can have the biggest military force, you can have a big army marching around, you can be shiny, holy, looking good, but if you are too quiet, you will never get in to what trying to block you out you have to learn that the enemy needs you to shut up you know there's about a thousand devils sitting in the parking lot right now that are shushing you right now that they're saying shh, 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 because they know we don't have to huff we don't have to puff but in the name of Jesus Do you hear that noise right there, devil? That's the sound of Bethlehem Church taking new territory. I got to help you. Some of y'all don't know what shout is, so I had to go buy you a shout. What I'm trying to explain to you right now is this, is that a shout is a sound or a blast or a war cry or a battle alarm that confuses the enemy. And when God puts his hand on you and pulls the trigger, if you resist him, it's because you got the tip of your tongue in the off position. You can, you can get the Holy Ghost sitting down. You can get the Holy Ghost standing up. You can get the Holy Ghost laying in the floor. You can get the Holy Ghost sitting in a lazy boy recliner. But you're not going to get the Holy Ghost with your mouth closed. I just read the instructions. And here's the first instructions on shout. Turn the tip to the on position. I wish I could tell somebody right now. You got to turn it on. God's going to deliver the miracle, but you got to turn the thing on. 
God's trying to get, he can't. But he said, oh, they figured it out. They spake in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What am I saying? You need to open up your mouth. I went shopping for y'all. This is not just any kind of shout. This is, it is triple action shout. Let me talk to you about the triple action of a shouting apostolic church. Here are the triple actions in your shout. It does this, triple action. Shout clings, penetrates, and lifts. When you shout, it'll cause you to cling to Jesus. When you shout, it'll cause you to penetrate that thing that you can't get through. And when you shout, it will lift your spirit and do more for you than it even does for God. I wish I had a penetrating shout. I wish I had a clinging shout. Let me read on this. Let me tell you how to use your shout. It said to use this, turn the tip to the own position. Tell your neighbor, you gotta turn it on. Some things God doesn't do for you, you gotta do this part yourself. Turn it on. And then it said, cover the entire stain with shout. I'm telling somebody that's got stains and blots and blemishes in your life. And the devil said, well, look at that. What you gonna do about it? You need to cover that problem with shout. You need to say, I'm going to shout in the middle of my stain. I'm going to cover. You need to cover your problem. Can I tell you, don't wait till it gets better. Shout right now. Cover yours. Cover your financial situation with a shout. Let me read some more of these directions. Here's a part, I, this is for everybody that's got the Holy Ghost the last six weeks or been renewed in the Holy Ghost or whatever, been baptized. It said, then take the shout formula and rub it in. You know what you do when you shout? You rub it in the face of the devil. And what I feel like doing is telling you, devil, you thought you had us, but we shouted our way out. I wish I had some of you, the devil's been giving you a rough time. You need to rub some shout in his face. You need to rub some shout. Whenever they began to shout, the Lord started turning the tide. And I come to tell somebody, the Lord said, I'm turning the tide at Bethlehem. The tide is turning. Your financial tide is turning. Your healing is turning. I wish I had somebody that said, I feel a turn in the tide right now. Come on, Billy, help me preach. I feel like God said, that was then, this is now. There's a shift coming. The tide, I wish you'd tell somebody, get out of my way. The tide is turning. How can I be still when the Lord is turning things? Do you hear what I'm telling you, Potts Camp, Mississippi? Things that used to hold you down are turning around. Things that used to cover you are being turned. It won't ever be like it used to be because God said, I will turn your morning into dancing. I wish you'd tell somebody, I've been turned. I've been turned. Somebody said, that's it, come on up here and help me preach, you shouters. Somebody said, I read the archaeologist said that the inner walls of the city of Jericho were maybe 15 feet tall, 6 feet thick, and that the outer wall was maybe 30 feet tall and 12 feet thick. It stretched over 7 acres, which meant it was about 0.6 miles to get all the way around Jericho where they were marching. Somebody said, how big of a God and how many gods must it take to be able to knock them walls down I come to tell you Uno one God one God to heal your body and his name is Jesus I wish I had a church and tell the devil Uno you thought you had me but Uno Uno you don't hear O Israel the Lord our God is one I'm preaching about Uno right now I wish you'd tell the devil you thought you was going to kill me last week but Uno you didn't 
let me find out. Is this a Uno church? You know what Uno is? It's when you only got one card left. I'm preaching to some people that said, I'm down to my last card. You need to say, but when I'm down to nothing, he's up to something. The only thing I got left is God, and that'll be just enough. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you ought to holler, Uno! Uno, devil, one God to fix this thing. Hear, O Bethlehem, the Lord thy God is one. Y'all doing so good, but you haven't quite convinced me yet. I need to find out. Does it take three gods to whip one devil? Or did Jesus tell Philip, he that had seen me, you've already seen the Father. I and my Father are one. I need to find a one God church that'll tell the devil, who no devil, you're not going to win here because one God. Let me talk to some of you Jericho marchers that have been marching through the midnight. The Bible said that they would march. They would get up early and march. And then at night, they would lay down and think, man, these walls ain't never going to come down. Every night, one night, two night, three night, they said, what's going to happen? But when they got up after all those six midnights, they got up on one morning that wasn't like every other morning. The Bible said when the new day dawned, it was a dawning of a new day. I need to tell somebody, we and might endure for the night but joy comes when a new day dawns I'm not talking about Sunday I'm talking about a new prophetic day has dawned on this church and the Lord sent me to tell you there's a new day dawning there's a new day dawning my God, does anybody feel what I feel right now? I feel like the Lord told me to tell somebody. It ain't going to be like it used to be. You're going to be the head and not the tail. It's a new day. What's been tormenting you, you're going to torment it. What's been fighting you, you're going to fight it. The script has flipped. Let me preach this. Yes, I gotta say this one at least. I gotta say this at least because I'm preaching to people here that have been sowing and giving and pouring into this church. And you seem like, man, the more I give, the more it seems like I'm putting it in pockets with holes in it. I don't see how it is that other people are blessed and I'm trying to tithe and give and make my commitments. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to somebody. You've given this church some money and the devil has fought you ever since. And now you're thinking, man, have I made a mistake? state by trying to give a little extra and do some more you listen when I come to tell you that there's one thing that I know about God and he said be not weary in well doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not that means there's somebody you got a payday that's coming I'm coming to tell somebody that the devil's been telling you you messed up. This is a king size payday. And I prophesy there's a king size payday. There's a king size blessing. I don't know who you gave, what you done, but I know God said just shout because I'm gonna pay you back. Everything you gave, I pay. There's a pay. I feel like this is the payday. Who am I preaching to right now that said I've been tithing and giving and it seems like I'm not getting anywhere? Where are you at? I dare you to run up here and say, Brother Johnson, I need a payday. I need a Holy Ghost payday. Oh, you're scared on this side. I'm going to come over here. Matter of fact, let me look back here. I'm looking for somebody that the enemy said, I'm going to cause you to be broke and busted and disgusted. You're not going to come out of this. I check right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. That's coming a payday to you, sir. That's coming a payday. There's a king, I prophesy, a king size payday that's going to pay him back and pay you back. Tell your neighbor, say, we're wrestling tonight. We're wrestling. You're wrestling for your own soul. You're wrestling for your kid's soul. 
You're wrestling for your family. You're wrestling for this community, this area. We're in a wrestling match. And Ephesians 6 and 13 said, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day. He said, take the whole armor. That means you got to armor all of it. You can't put some on. You got to take the whole armor. I feel like this is an army dressed for battle right now. I feel a church that said, oh, I'm getting my helmet on now. I'm getting my shoes on now. I'm going to work. What are them people doing? We're armoring all. We're armoring all. <laughs> Hear me. We're not on a cruise ship. We're on a warship. This ain't the love boat. This is the tugboat. <laughs> What we're doing is trying to pull as many people as we can. You know what a little tugboat will do? It'll push a big old ship. Why? We're not on a cruise. We're not on the love boat. We're not on vacation. The enemy's trying to shut us down. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I see some people here. You got a sword in your hand. You got a shield of faith. Turn and tell somebody right now. Say your worship is your warship. Your worship is your warship. If you don't have no worship, you don't have no warship. But the fact that you got an armor on tells me the devil is in trouble. When you decide to fight and shout and quit pounding. Ooh. Here you go, pastor. Matthew 19 and 26 says, with men, these things are impossible. Tell your neighbor, say, that's some of your problem. You want men, tell them, to do what only God can do. That's why you feel let down about people because you think people are your source. You think people are supposed to supply all your needs. And people cannot do it because he said with men, these things are impossible, but with God. I'm speaking to some of you here tonight that said it looks impossible. I don't know how I'm going to get out. I don't know what's going to happen. I come to tell you, it ain't nothing a miracle can't whip. One miracle. You're there's somebody here right now. God's about to give you a miracle. I dare you to throw your hands up and, shout and say, Jesus, with you all things. Come on, I feel a whipping miracle. I feel a miracle's about to whip every devil on your job. I feel a miracle's about to whip every demon set up against your house. Come on, it ain't nothing a miracle can't whip. I challenge somebody that needs a miracle run down here right now and say I'm taking that home with me because I'm about to whip this devil I'm about to put you on a sandwich and eat it I'm about to eat your lunch there is a miracle in the house I'm hurrying let me ask you this question how many of you are glad that you can come back to church after three months Psalms 122, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now, let me tell you why some people ain't glad about coming to the house of God. It's because you got baggage and you don't know what to do with it. But I bought you a glad trash bag because you feel like got too much baggage to come in here but I got news for you David knew something he said the church the house of God is where I can bring my baggage and dump it all out on the altar I'm here to tell somebody come on with all your problems come on with all your mistakes and say I'm glad to go to church because I gotta dump some trash some of y'all need to dump some trash is there anybody that says I was glad when they said unto me Come on down here. I'm about to dump some problems. Come on, somebody. Don't go dumping in a bar room. Don't go bumping in some bar. Don't go dumping in the casino. Come right in here to the altar and burn your trash on a Holy Ghost fire.
Now listen, and I'll quit because I got to be here all night. It was Joshua who told them to shout because the walls were going to come down. But, but it was also Joshua, not Moses, Joshua who spent 40 years in the wilderness with these folks. And it was Joshua that said, put the Ark of the Covenant in the water. And the minute that the feet of the priest touch the Jordan River, it's going to open up and it's going to part. Tell your neighbor, say, we're about to displace some water. He said, when you put your foot in that river, it's going to open up the Jordan River because you can never get to Jericho if you don't get over this water first. Watch this. So the Bible said in Joshua uh, 4 and 7, the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan. Watch this. In, 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 in 1953, there was a man who, 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 who created WD-40. His name was Norm Larson. And Norm Larson was attempting to concoct a formula that would prevent corrosion, a task which is only done by displacing water. So when he finally got his WD-40, he named it wd 40 and an and a, and a, and a, and interviewer came to him and a reporter said, why the name? What does this mean? And he said, well, he said, it, the WD is simply for water displacement. I said, oh. And he said, well, why is it 40? He said, well, he said, I tried 39 times and it didn't work. He said, but on the 40th time, I displaced some water. I see Joshua going around that hill with him. First year, it didn't get us out. Second year, three, 37 years, ain't out. 39 years, can't get out. But on the 40th time around, there was some water displacement at the Jordan River. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm gonna say something very cliche and I usually don't. You may have to try again and again, but the main thing is, is that you step over this thing. I'm telling somebody, rejoice not against me, oh my adversary, when I fall I'm going to go 39 times and one of these days like WD-40 I'm going to step over this thing so praise your hands up to the Lord I feel the Lord moving right here to tell somebody I'm about to displace some obstacles I'm about to remove some things out of your life I may even remove some people out of your life I'm going to remove everything that's hindering you and blocking you I'm about to remove there's going to be a water displacement Ooh, let's pray for a minute I I feel the Lord coming in here right now. Listen to me. Now you young people, listen to me. If you're 19, if you're in your teens, 19 and down, you listen to me real good. The Bible said, children, obey your parents. I waited till the last night to get on this. The spirit of rebellion that is in the world is trying to get in the Christian home. Your Bible says, train them up in the way they should go. And when they're old, they shall not depart from it. We live in an hour where it's not that the children obey the parents, but now the parents obey the children. And the kids tell you if they're going to go to church or not. And the kids tell you what they're going to do and when they're going to do it and what they're going to watch and what they ain't going to watch. And let me tell you something because you're giving in trying to be your kid's friend instead of their mama and their daddy. What you are doing by not training them, you are creating a monster. 
You're going to have a 40-year-old kid living in your house, punching holes in the wall, telling you what to do, and they're going to live off of you freeloading if you don't train them now. First of all, that you got to go to church if you live under this house. We go to church on Sunday. We go to church on Wednesday. And if I decide to go on Friday... I looked at a statistic the other day and they were talking about how many uh, uh, people are 40 years old and up that are still living at home with their parents. No responsibility. Don't know how to act. Don't know how to treat people. And then you bring them to school and the teacher can't do nothing with them because you never taught them to say yes sir and yes ma'am. But what I'm saying to you right now is we're about to rebuke this spirit out of our homes and tell it, oh no devil, you can't have my kids. And my mama used to say this might hurt you or hurt me more than it hurts you, but I'm not going to raise a monster. I'm going to raise a minister. I'm Come on, I'm not raising a problem child. I'm raising a prophet of God. I wish somebody here would say, I got to go home and I got to straighten some things up. You're going to raise a monster. Let me just finish with this. This perverse generation that wants to tear down, destroy, that wants to, 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 to cuss and blaspheme God. You listen to me. God only takes so much. You not going to blankety blank this and speak against the church and the man of God and the things of God and they're burning, they're burning flags but they're burning Bibles too. And trying to outlaw. And, and, and what's beginning to happen now, we are seeing, seeing the cup of sin fill up. And while all this happens, you and I are standing here kind of thinking, man, what is going on? Where is God? Here's what your Bible said in Psalms 2 and 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth, look at that, have set themselves and the rulers take counsel against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us but here's what your Bible said he that set up in the heavens shall laugh and have them in derision you know what God's doing about this he's snickering he says ha 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 he says at the end of this thing I'm laughing because my church is going to win I wish somebody stand up and laugh at the devil and say devil you ain't going to win I've been reading this book from cover to cover and God's laughing at your futile work. What is man that he can withstand God? Oh, come on, somebody shout to the Lord. Let there be a shout go up. Okay, I'm finishing right here. I'm going to finish here. I'd be here all day. I'm going to finish right here. You listen to me very closely because, because I'm speaking to people that's being stabbed in the back. This is the time the Bible prophesied about that there would be brother betraying brother and sister and, and mother and daughter-in-law and the love of many with wax cold. That's what you're living in. And here's what your Bible says. Get ready. I'm going to finish right here. In Luke 6 and 22, Jesus said, Blessed are ye when men shall... How's that a blessing? How's that a blessing? Don't you want to win the popularity contest? Well, Jesus says, my system works different than yours. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. And when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Are you ready? Next verse. Here's what he said to do. If somebody does that to you, verse 23 said, stop going to church. It said, suck your thumb and feel sorry for yourself. Stop worshiping immediately. Whatever you do, if somebody does you like that, you get a free get out of praise card. Just sit down and don't do anything and feel sorry for yourself. No, he said, if that happens to you and you're really in the right and they're in the wrong, he said, rejoice in that day and leap for joy. He said, you ought to bounce. If, if somebody's done you wrong, 
Don't get bitter, start bouncing. Come on, I'm looking for all the backstab people. Act like Jesus. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they've done. But as for me, I'm going to bounce. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. Your family's lied on you. Your family said you're crazy for coming to this church. What do you do? You bounce. Come on, you're in the washer. You're in the wringer. You're in the dryer. But when you come out, you're going to... You go smell pretty good because God knows how to put some softener in the heat. Woo. Do you hear what I'm telling you? I'm preaching to people that's been through the ringer. Your world turned upside down. I'm just going to throw this out here to you and tell you, you need to bounce one more time with a shout in your mouth to tell the devil, you're not, I'm going to leap. It ain't going to stick because I'm going to leap. I'm leap. Lie on me, I'm leaping. Stab me in the back, I'm bouncing. She can't touch her. Come on, musicians. You hear me? There's healing that's already breaking loose in this place right now. There are healing rivers that are turned loose in this place right now. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give some of you a chance because I know you. The, these are the rowdy bunch up here. If you don't want to get stepped on, jumped on, but I got them calm for a minute. Listen to me. If you need a miracle, well, I don't, I'm not asking you what kind. If you need a miracle, throw your hands up and run up here with us. And if you're up here, take two steps closer to this altar right now. God is about to release a miracle. If you need the miracle of the Holy Ghost, you need the miracle of a breakthrough. You need the miracle of a fine new natural breakthrough. If you need the miracle of a breakthrough in your house, shut up. Come on, I'm waiting on you. That's beautiful. Come on. That's it, come on down there. Take a few steps in. Let them just get in there behind you. Let them get close. God's about to pour the Holy Ghost out here. What's your name? Kristen. The reason you couldn't die a prayer covering stopped it. That's why you didn't die. It was right there. Could have been, should have been. I see an intoxicator in your body that was sent by the enemy to murder you, to kill you, to take you out. But a prayer covering blocked it. Blocked it.
I see you in like a comatose state, like out. But somehow in your mind, where your mouth won't work, like you're like this, in your mind, you said, Jesus, help me. And if somebody doesn't find you and get to you in time, you're out of here. But the Lord got to you because prayer works. And what you're doing, Kristen, what you're doing today, and these people are on your side, what you're doing, to, didn't you get baptized today? What you're doing today is fulfilling the vow that you made to God when you told him, God, if you will help me, get me out of this mess, I'll do what's right. Huh? Huh? And the Lord told me to tell you, he did his part. And you complete your vow. That's why you came and done what you've done because you made a covenant with God. I hear her praying. I hear her saying it. If the rapture happens, we don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. But if the rapture don't happen, I see you up and down the road. And I see you working in a good place. I see you happy. And every relationship that blowed up in your face in times gone by. Let me work on this a minute. I see the hand of the enemy got you like choking you. The enemy has tried to put you in these hostile situations, these abusive situations, relationships to destroy your mind, to make you think that you're nothing, you'll never be nothing because of what somebody grabbed you and told you. But you get ready to shout. The Lord said. I see marks getting on your body, like marked up. Listen to me. God said, I'm erasing it. And I'm going to erase the memories of what got told to you that caused you to think that you can never be the woman that you know you should be. You are not that. You're what I see. You're what I see. I see an education that's going to be completed it's going to be setting you in a right place, in a right position, in the right job. And I don't know how this is, so I'm just going to say this and walk off. But I see a wedding. And what it is, is a purity that's coming back over you that you don't think of yourself as some abused, knocked around, mistreated little girl the Lord said he's going to make a woman out of you that you're going to know who your husband is Patiba Sekima Lotona Mambreke Blahatala Basheke Basika Christian open your mouth and speak that out with fervency right there with your tongue pray it in the Holy I want this church to let us shout out if you need a miracle shout right now if you need the Holy Ghost, shout right now. Come on for the next 20 seconds. I'm saying what Joshua said. Shout for the Lord has given you this city. Shout for the Lord has given you that building over there. Shout for the Lord has given you your family. Shout unto the Lord.
Come on, hit it, Austin. Beat those drums. Come on, rattle that keyboard for a moment. I want everybody up here, put your microphone to your mouth and just shout. Don't sing yet. Just shout. Do it, do it. one more time everybody kind of turn that way towards that new building stretch your hands out that way towards that building over there God's about to do something miraculous when I say shout this next time I want this musicians to shout I want you to bang on that thing and shout that you can start playing but we're gonna shout there's gonna come a financial out of nowhere didn't see coming miracle that's gonna come that's gonna help you go into that building over there it's gonna go into that place and it's gonna prepare a sanctuary for the Lord Jesus to be glorified I want to know can this church shout for a Jericho miracle I wish I had a shouter. I wish I had a shouter. I wish I had a shouter. Oh, my God, have mercy. Hallelujah. Come on, they're going to sing. I see angels on that building. I see angels over there laying floor and tile. I see angels over there floating sheetrock. I see angels over there hanging screens and media. I see angels over there saying we are here to help what the house of the Lord needs to come. I, as you shout, they're working. As you shout, miracle money's coming. You don't hear me right now. If you want a financial miracle, it's here right now, right now. As your praise is, I'm preaching to people that need a job, that need a raise, who need some help. If you'll shout right now, there's a financial equatorial malasita. Grab one person by the hand. Get ready to sing. Grab one person by the hand, whoever your praise partner is. You're just going to pray together to confirm what God is already doing. There's somebody here, I don't have time to get back into this. You have been having a pain in your side, something like below this rib or up in here. You've been having this pain here. But if you'll check yourself, it's gone. It's gone. It's out. I want somebody to check that and see. Then wave your hand and say, I don't have that pain no more. That, that's you. Wave your hand. Let me see. It's out. It's out. It's out. It's out. It's out. Whoever you got to hold to right now, we're just going to lay hands on people and pray. And we can't get to you. You're going to have to shout your own way out. I'm going to prophesy to you on this last night that I see financial miracles coming for that building and coming for your house. And God said, take care of my house and I'll take care of your house. Say of the Lord. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's somebody about to see a mighty turn in the financial tide. Are you ready right now? If you need a financial miracle, I want a Jericho shout to come out of you. Are you ready? Let it out.
is under my feet Yeah, the law he speaks is defeated Yeah, the he is under my feet Yeah, the law he speaks is defeated told you Sam's Club. Amen. Thank you, Brother Johnson, for giving yourself to us for these six weeks. We appreciate you so much. How many is going to reach their hand over towards Brother Johnson and pray a blessing on his ministry, over his family? In Jesus' name, God, I pray, Lord, that you touch Brother Robin, Sister Lisa. God, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch their children by the authority of your word. Let the blessing of the Lord come upon them. Use them mightily, protect them, and keep them in Jesus' name. God, touch Dalton in the name of the Lord. We claim your blessing and anointing on him in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's right, Ben. Pray for him, son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Would 
church Wednesday night at 715, family prayer tomorrow night at 730. There's work to be done. There's work to be done. Got camp meeting coming up one week from Wednesday. Amen. Amen. If, if, if the Lord lays it on your heart to give a financial blessing to our evangelist, not only do we allow it, we encourage it. And we pray that you'll be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Got another one to be baptized in Jesus' name tonight. Isn't that awesome? Praise the Lord. God bless you. You can pray and worship as long as you like. Amen. You can be dismissed when you care to.